Okay, so we're outside today grilling, and when we grill, we want to make sure that our grill is super hot. So this has been on for about 10 minutes to get warmed up. My meat has been sitting out at room temperature for about a half an hour. I seasoned it all up, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cook these steaks to medium rare. Um, so it's about seven minutes on each side, and I'm going to show you the crosshatch motion. So I'm laying the meat down. I'm going to lay it down. Um, at 10 o'clock. And once again, meat cooks better when set out for a little while at room temperature. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close my grill. And I have to go inside to get a new plate because this plate had the raw meat on it, so it's now contaminated. So I wanna make sure I go in and switch plates out um, for the final product. So I'm gonna let these cook. I'm gonna close the grill. You don't have to close the top of your grill. It just makes the cooking process go faster and it heats things up, but you have to be mindful that because you're cooking at such a higher temperature with the top closed, you need to really pay attention so they don't burn. Okay, so here we have the steaks. You have to be careful with your flames, um, especially with grills and barbecues. Do you get some flames sometimes from the fat on the meat will produce the flame, or sometimes it's just stuff that's burning that fell in between your grills. So we're gonna go ahead and move these to two o'clock to make our um, cross hat. Sometimes it is going to be 11 and one, people will tell you, and I'm gonna move this up just to get away from this flame here. When you're grilling meat, hamburgers, don't ever press down on the meat. You don't want those juices to seep out. You want those juices to get trapped in there. So how we're going to do that is after we're cooking to the internal temperature that you're seeking right now, once again, I'm cooking this to a medium rare. Um, so I'm looking for a very tender part of my thumb. That's a tester that we can do and I'll show you that video. But as I'm cooking, um, after I'm done, I'm gonna let them sit and rest for five to 10 minutes before we eat, just so that when you cut into them, those juices all don't come out on your plate, they stay into the meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this again and then when I flip them, you'll be able to see the cross hatch. So you can see I'm getting a lot of flame on my grill now, so I want to be really careful. I'm going to leave the top open to continue cooking. I'm going to check the meat for doneness, and these are almost done. We're here talking about grilling today. Um, you want your heat to be very hot anytime you grill, so it's nice when you have a barbecue outside because you can close the lid and then it gets super hot. Like this is like 600 degrees right now. Now when I lay my meat on there, I always want to lay presentation side down. And I'm always going to go 10 and 2. So I'm going to start at 2. So like hands of a clock. And I have um, my dirty plate here that I will take back into my house at this time. And then I have my clean plate and my clean utensils. So I'm going to go ahead and close the lid for a minute and I will be right back. Okay, so when you lift the lid, make sure that you're careful that heat's not going to come out on you. Okay. And you're gonna stay um, on each side for about eight minutes for like a medium rare. And that's what I'm looking for. You can, so you can start to see I'm creating my grill mark. And I can go ahead and keep this lid shut. Okay, so now I'm at two, I'm gonna go to 10. I'm gonna lift up my steak by the bone is the best. If there is a bone and then I'm gonna go to 10 o'clock. And that's gonna create that cross hatch, that desire look presentation wise on your steak. You don't have to keep the lid closed. Um, your steak will just cook faster if you do. I'm sorry for all of this. We were um, trying to wipe it down, but it's a little too hot.
Okay, so sometimes you'll get flames coming up because of the fat of your steak. Um, don't let your steak burn, but you can see that crosshatch I created there. So you can just move your steak to a different part of the grill. You can see the nice crosshatch here, the 10 and 2 squares that we're creating with our steak. I'm going to go ahead and leave it open now that I flipped it so you can watch it. Um, once again, it's usually the fat that's dripping through that's causing your flames to come up. So you can move it around. And I like my steaks medium rare to rare, so I do not cook a steak typically as long as other people do. But you will see a chart below that helps you and will guide you with that. And these are semi-boneless um, ribeyes. And I left them out for an hour before cooking at room temperature and I seasoned them. And you can test the steak if you are testing it with your finger. Um, so basically different parts of your hand. Um, right here, this is about rare. If I bend my hand, then I get a medium and then so forth. And the harder I do it, the thicker you'll go. To kill the bacteria, you want your steak to cook between um, 145 to 155. The internal temperature. Then you'll let your steak rest for about five minutes before you cut it and enjoy it. If you cut in too early, all the juices will evaporate and your steak will not be nice and juicy. So you need to let it rest for five to 10 minutes to relax before cutting into it. And once again, just checking with my finger here for doneness. 